I'm Louis Ryan, I work for Google. Uh, I've been at Google just over 11 years now. Uh, and for about seven of those years, I was working on Google's API management platform, uh, which slowly and gradually evolved over time to become something that looks very much like what people think of service mesh today. Uh, you know, we have sidecar proxies distributed throughout production, uh, and those proxies perform layer seven behaviors that sit in front of workloads and help mediate traffic and provide a whole bunch of cross-cutting services. Um, so very much aligned with what people are using Envoy today in the kind of sidecar idiom. And so we were working on that project and starting to think about maybe open sourcing a kind of an equivalent set of technologies uh, and you know had this idea of something like service mesh and providing a control plane for it. And then Envoy came along and we were at the time looking at proxies both in open source and maybe writing our own from scratch. And you know, this present fell out of the sky. Uh, so you know, we had some conversations with some partners and you know that's kind of really how the whole Project Istio got kicked off, right? Which is how do we kind of provide that capability, something that we've been doing inside of Google for several years at that point, and making it you know, something that others could use. The kind of fundamental premise of Service Mesh, which is why on earth are you making application developers think about networking? Like they hate it. It's a giant pain in the neck and all the things that go along with it. They just, why are you making me think in L3, L4 terms? Um, and I think that's fundamentally why. It also offered something on the other side of the coin, right? You have all these kind of operators, these admins internally, who are constantly getting yelled at by all these application development people. It's like, oh, like, I'm suffering, I'm dying, why are you doing this to me? And you know, they're probably a little fed up too. And so the idea of having a, a control plane to manage these behaviors that you know, that crowd can deal with, you know, so it has mutual appeal. Right? It, it, it creates a nice division between the set of responsibilities and helps satisfy kind of two different constituencies within the organization. One that wants control and one that wants flexibility. Obviously, this you know, you know, massive blooming of interest, et cetera, uh, you know, everyone's trying to learn what the hell this means. Uh, how to operate it, how to control it, how do I fit this into my ecosystem? Can I sell this to my CIO or CTO? Right? There's just a whole bunch of issues that go along with you know, any one of these new technologies, whether it's you know, service mesh or managed containerization, right? they're evolving so quickly and enterprises don't always move that fast and there's a learning curve that goes along with all this stuff. So hopefully we can do a better job in helping you know, educate the market, provide them tooling, simplify the systems. You know, it, it, it takes a while for these things to become not necessarily mature technically enough, but the market is mature enough to be able to absorb what's being offered in terms of technology. And, and that took time with Docker, it took time with lots of other technologies over the course of at least the time that I've been working in this industry. You know, I go to these, these events and I see people using Envoy or Istio in situations that I wouldn't really have expected to be, it to be ready for yet. Or more importantly, for the industry to be ready to think about it yet. Um, you know, when I see guys who are worked in the telco industry and have managed you know access networks for 20 or 30 years starting to talk about this stuff it kind of blows my mind a little bit the industry has been trying to enable application developers to put functionality where users want to access it on your phone on your nightstand you know in your refrigerator your light bulbs right? and so that that problem that application developers have had on boxes and clouds, that's, that's just going to continue, right? And those same set of application developers are going to have the same set of complaints when they deal with those platforms too. So you know, there are probably going to be real limits, but we haven't hit them yet. And I don't know quite when we're going to hit them. I feel like I'm a bit on, on for the ride at this point. Um, but it hasn't seemed to slow down. It only seems to be getting faster. Having things be done in open source has been a critical enabler for this. You've had lots of very capable technologies come and go in the industry because they weren't accessible, right? Because there were barriers to entry. You know, if it's going to be this pervasive, it can't really be locked in in any way. You, know, you have to be able to give it to developers and you have to give it to people who want to provide services on top or build extensions to the platform. Um, and open source is the way to provide that kind of creative freedom. And I think that's really ultimately what's going to drive this forward. You know, it's been very powerful for Envoy. It's been powerful for Istio too. Uh, and I think that's an important thing going forward in the industry is you know, 
you know, there will be differentiation and that's fine. You know, I think vendors are, should be allowed to provide capabilities on top, but there's a fundamental set of things that are enablers and those should be open source. And I think that's, that's important uh, and that will help you know, with that reach, right? help getting it in, reach its full potential. And, and so that's, you know, I'm, I, I think that's a principal thing that we want to stick to.